Hello Simmers and welcome to Oakland International Airport where we are with the SSG 7478 V2.2 uh, The version, the update was released yesterday uh, and that includes now the freighter version of this uh, airplane So we are here in Oakland for a uh, long haul flight with the freighter from Oakland to Amsterdam just to see whether we are now finally capable of uh, programming long-haul flights in the flight management computer. That was a uh, problem with the V2.0. So let's just uh, see how it works. Um, if you look at the 3D modeling, again, they, uh, well, they nailed that uh, just as in the previous versions. It looks absolutely stunning. Very, very nice attention to detail. And lots of PBR and reflections. And it looks stunning. It really does. The 3D model was always nice with the SSG747, but uh, in V2.2 that is still very much the case, as you can see. What they also did is they overhauled the uh, cockpit uh, textures. They look slightly better than what they did uh, before. Uh, we now have some uh, realistic look to the uh, throttle quadrant. If you take a look at the uh, seat belts, this is now nice 3D. This is not just a, a print on the uh, textures of the chair. So all in all, it just looks a little bit nicer than what it uh, did before. So nice uh, going for the developers there. The airplane is equipped with an electronic flight book uh, where you can check the uh, ground surfaces. You can open and close the doors. So let's uh, open some cargo doors and let's take a look outside for the animations. Animations look really, really nice. Let's take a look at that nose cargo door that's iconic for the 747 of course. Slowly but surely it is opening, nicely uh, animated. We'll take a look uh, here from the flight deck where you can see the nose actually starting to rise. Uh, anyway, the GPU that is connected to ground power, so let's uh, put in some electricity in the airplane. Switch on the batteries. Standby power to auto, external power engaged. Let's switch on the nav lights and set the IRS system to NAV. Then quickly take a look in the flight management computer. Ident page 7478 freighter. ARAC 13th of August, 10th of September, so that's valid. Program SSG 7478 V2.2. All fine, POS initialization. Reference airport is Oakland, Kilo, Oscar, Alpha, Kilo. And with the GPS pulse in there, that is the system now aligning to the correct point. So again, press Kilo Oscar Alpha Kilo for the origin. Arriving in Amsterdam, Echo Hotel Alpha Mike. S flight Charlie Lima X-ray 7606. Expect to depart Oakland from runway 30. So that's the initial uh, setup uh, complete. Let's take another look at the uh, EFB. Let's continue. Fueling, you can set it in here. According to the flight plan, we require 103,396. So let's make that 103,400 kilos. Uh, so you can set it in here. Set 103,400. start fueling and if we go to the payload page according to the flight plan we have 46931 so 46.9 so clear 40 and then 6.9 and load that setting so now the airplane the weight and balance is being set And we already had the uh, 
external power connected and applied iris is aligning so basically what we can do is proceed with now uh, programming the uh, flight management computer starting with the flight plan so we expect to depart oakland from runway 30 and we will follow the slnt2 to sacramento execute that one so slnt2 to sacramento after that we will fly juliet 32 Towards uh, Foxtrot My Golf. Then we will fly Juliet 7 to REO. Now, by the way, the um, flight management system has a maximum of 120 waypoints in 20 pages. Uh, if you exceed that, you will get the uh, route is full message. Then it's a direct to Golf Tango Foxtrot. So I think we are all right on this flight, but you might run into some trouble when you, for instance, fly from Tokyo back to Europe. I think you have more than 20 pages on waypoints then. But th that's something to find out in, a, in another video. So then it's the Juliet 530 to Yankee Quebec Delta. That is set. Then it's a direct to Kemsa. With a direct to Fassa. Direct to Pepki. Direct to Safri. And then it will be a direct to 6050 North. And then in the arrival page, it's going to be a Lomso to Alpha arrival transitioning via Lomso. For the ILS runway 27, we expect a westerly storm in Amsterdam, transitioning via RTIP. Uh, no, not RTIP, I'm sorry. Suho. So let's set it like that. Let's go back to the route page. Let's go to the legs page, see if there's any route discontinuities. They are now fixed. So 4,917, 4,914, so that's correct. That's the lateral navigation now entered, so we can enter a long haul flight in the flight management computer now, that's nice. Um, for the performance, the zero fuel weight, you cannot enter that yourself, you have to press the left one line selector key next to the gross weight, and that will automatically fill the zero fuel weight. Um, for our alternate in Eindhoven, we will require, let's say, zero three, 3000 kilos of fuel. We expect to fly at flight level 350 with a cost index of 050. And that should do the trick. So thrust limits, let's set the D-rated takeoff. Takeoff flaps 20. 
that will give us V1 145, rotate 161, V2 171. So let's set this one to 191, V2 plus 20. And set the legs page on the other uh, flight management computer. So if we take a look at the charts for Oakland. It's going to be takeoff, then heading 270. Then it's going to be a right hand turn. So let's set 270 on the initial heading. And let's take a look at the initial climb. Uh, at or above 6000, then transition, expect filed altitude 10 minutes after departure transition altitude is 18,000 so let's set 18,000 as the initial climb so let's switch the flight directors on set LNAV, VNAV active there's no active route, that's strange because I thought we executed the route so legs executed road oh activate execute there we are uh, finally sorry <laughs> um oh, it's almost midnight here it's time for me to go to sleep <laughs> uh, let's see oakland to Amsterdam. so that's set uh, with everything here set trust limits takeoff that is also set so the trim 7.8 let's take a look at the uh, overhead panel for the uh, electric hydraulic system set everything here to auto and with all the fuel now on board let's take a look at the fuel page verify that we have the correct amount of fuel on board 103.4 is correct distributed over this tanks the center tank is almost empty so we're gonna leave those fuel pumps off it's gonna be the uh, fuel pumps for engines 1, 2, 3, 4 and the overdrive pumps as well as the crossfeed valves they have to be open for the correct fuel configuration the crossfeed valves are already open so let's engage fuel pumps for all engines and the overdrive pumps as well center tanks can remain off and what we'll do now is we will start the APU and now let's take a look at the checklist first so let's check the oxygen so oxygen is checked 100% oh. so first you have to uh, press the select and then when you uh, press the oxygen uh, test buttons it will go green automatically flight instruments heading an altimeter uh, the altimeter is not yet set so let's derive a ADIS for Oakland Kilo Oscar Alpha Kilo Airport Information Juliet 2053 Sulu Weather Wind 287 at 1 4 Visibility 4 Sky Condition Ceiling 1600 Broken Temperature 2 2 U.15 Altimeter 2 9 8 8 Advice on initial contact you have information Juliet Information Juliet is on board Altimeter 2 9 8 8 so this is set Kilo Parking Brake that is set so signs are on the MCP the speed V2 plus 21901 is set heading 270 is set and initial altitude 18,000 feet is also set so oh, this one is correct Takeoff speeds V1, rotate and V2 are calculated and set. CDU pre flight is completed. The trim, we have to set that one to 7.8. So let's take a look at the flight control page. 
it's now 7.5 so let's set that to 7.8 there it is taxi and takeoff briefing well what we'll do is we'll push back nose to the left taxi out uh, till the end of the taxiway there then turn right left right to the runway uh, for takeoff uh, below 80 knots we will stop for any uh, warning we'll abort takeoff I will call abort close thrust levers apply uh, full uh, manual braking to uh, bring the airplane to a complete stop between 80 knots and V1 we will only abort for fire warnings and above V1 we will climb out contact ATC and ask for uh, directions uh, assess the situation in the air see what we'll do then um, if we return we first have to dump a lot of fuel over the ocean when we come in for a landing uh, we'll bring the airplane to a complete stop see what the situation is and decide whether to evacuate or stay on board any questions no questions that's the takeoff briefing completed uh, so let's start closing some doors and we can let's see the APU started so set the APU generators to the buses APU bleed can be switched on that is now on that means we can disconnect the ground power units and we can already uh, switch the beacons to on so let's set it to both, both the lower and the upper uh, beacon lights uh, are now working so we'll just have to wait for the uh, nose uh, cargo door to close and what we'll do in the meantime is we'll set up the pushback So let's just wait a bit with uh, before we call him. Uh, what we have to do is we have to set our transponder. Let's set the flight number to uh, BR squawk code 7606 and set this to TA. So that is set. So the before start checklist is completed. let's take a look at the doors page nose cargo door is now locked well, it was already clear on the display it's not clear in the animation now it's closed all right, so what we'll do is we'll call in the pushback tuck. Ground to cockpit, tow is driving up. Set the engine uh, display on the uh, ICAS for the uh, engine startup sequence. Packs are off as they are required to during the engine start. So there's the tuck. So let's remove the chocks. We are on the parking brakes. And that will make okay. life a All lot easier for the duck driver. Ready to connect. So it will lift us any second now. There we go. So we should get the uh, release parking brake message any second now. 
Echo connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. Brakes released, clear to push. Starting pushback, and you may start engines. Roger, starting sequence first four, then three, then two and one simultaneously. Starting number four. So that's moving up, spooling up. Spooling up fast, by the way. I think that's a little bit f too fast for real life, but the uh, developers, like I mentioned before, uh, did not aim for a study level sim that's almost as close to the real thing as possible. It's just an add-on fun to fly. The procedure itself is correct, it's just that they, uh, well, the, the engine spool up time is a lot faster than normal. I think that has got to do something with the playability, uh, but uh, all in all, definitely not bad. The, the procedure that you have to follow Start the APU, open the APU bleed, switch off the packs, pull the starter switch, uh, then wait for it to reach a certain level before you open the fuel flow valve. I think that's uh, quite realistic uh, in terms of the procedure that one has to follow to start the engines correctly. So that's nice. So starter cut out for number four, starting number three. I think on the 7478 it's even possible to start up all engines at, at the same time. So fuel flow open. Pretty nice animation on the engines uh, during startup. So start a cutout, start number two, and start number one. Fuel flow on number two, fuel flow on number one is now open. So N1 is pulling up on both engines. Operation complete. Set parking brake. Roger, we have four good engine starts up here. Parking brakes are set. You are clear to disconnect. Disconnecting tow. Stand by. So number two is stable and number one is stable. So with the uh, engine generators now uh, providing the electricity, we can switch the APU generators off. We can switch the APU bleed off with the engine bleeds now open. We can engage the packs and switch the APU off. So this all looking very, very good. And bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal will be on the right. We'll see you next time and have a great flight. Thanks for your help. See you next time. Bye bye. So let's perform a flight control check. So full left, full right, neutral, down, up, 
neutral and the rudder. Four lefts, four rights in neutral. Flight control check completed, set flaps 20. Clear signal is received. Anti-ice is not required. Recall is checked. Auto brake set RTO flight controls were checked. Ground equipment is clear. Flaps 20 are set, so this is before takeoff. Checklist also completed. So let's release the parking brake. Uh, no, first switch the uh, runway turn off. And taxi lights on. Release the parking brake. Start our taxi towards runway 30. Now use uh, engine numbers 2 and 3 for taxiing. See if that works. Ooh, let me just adjust the sound level a little bit. So here we are. What we can do is decrease the range. That will give us a moving map on the uh, nav display for the uh, uh, airport uh, layout. Just one massive airplane, really wide wingspan. And what you actually see is that airplanes this size they have their own uh, specified uh, taxi route charts in the Navigraph, which is pretty cool because they are just not capable of taxiing anywhere on an airport. So airports that uh, can receive the uh, 7478 or for instance the A380, they will give out a uh, charge for the taxiways that can be used by those airplanes. So let's apply a little bit of manual braking to bring the ground speed back to 10. For this uh, 90 degrees right turn. And then it's a left turn down here to the end of the runway 30. Ground handling is really nice with this uh, add-on. Doesn't have the tendency to skid all over the place like some other uh, add-ons do. So let's switch the strobe lights.
on. And let's say that we're clear to line up and wait runway 30, so the auto throttle is armed. Let's say that we're clear to line up and wait. So let's set the transponder to the NAV display. Increase the range on the NAV display. And line up and wait on runway 30. Set the uh, transponder to uh, TARA. Zero facing San Francisco, not to be seen in the fog today, but let's just say that we are cleared for takeoff. So landing lights come on, taxi light can be switched off, exterior lights are set, flaps 20 sets, trim was set, auto brakes RTO. So we release the brakes and increase throttle. Timer is now started and let's set takeoff thrust. Cross checked. V one. V one. Rotates. V two. Positive rate, gear up. So let's lower the nose. But let's uh, make sure that we keep climbing. Autopilot is in command, Elnov, Finov active. Set flaps 10. Flaps 5 selected. So runway turn of lights can be switched off. Right, 
think uh, some work needs to be done on the particle system in terms of the uh, animations that that brings. Here we are climbing out of Oakland. The uh, port of Oakland and the city of San Francisco on the other side of the bay. Oakland, that is probably Jack London Square with the uh, Lake Merritt downtown. Oakland Bay Bridge. So let's take a look inside the flight deck. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, legs page. There's a speed constraint here. So we'll have to remain with this uh, flap setting for now. Sausalito. Golden Gate Bridge, unfortunately, not to be seen. It's behind these uh, clouds here. Alcatraz. By the way, the scenery that you saw, that was uh, Orpex, uh, Northern California. So gear is up, auto brakes off. Flaps cannot uh, be retracted right now. At Rebus, we have to be at uh, 196 knots. After that, we will continue to increase the speed towards uh, when we fly towards Sacramento. And here we go for Sacramento. So let's dial up the uh, heading. Flaps one. Flaps up and increase the range on this display so that we have the next waypoint in sight, that is Sacramento. So here we are. Heading direct for Sacramento, from Sausalito to the Sacramento VOR. Speed is 2.50. Flaps are up. So let's see, after takeoff checklist completed. Let's uh, put the fuel page in there. Things look rather nicely here. Take a look at the progress page, Amsterdam. We expect it to arrive there with 0, 0.0 fuel. That cannot be good. Quite surprised that I don't get a, a, a fuel uh, warning.
Let's take a look at the engines. So the fuel flow is now, of course, very high because we are full power uh, in a climb. As soon as we reach our cruise altitude, we will level off. The fuel flow will drop significantly. As soon as it uh, has done that, we can calculate uh, with that fuel flow uh, and the amount of fuel on board, how much hours of flying time we, uh, we still have. Anyway, we have passed flight level 100, so the landing lights can be switched off. There we are. Happy days, nice departure. While well, we enjoy these uh, scenes of uh, Northern California. And we fly towards the nights. So, so far so good. We are en route to Amsterdam. I'm quite curious how it will work out with the fuel. Um, I'm using the same uh, profile in uh, Professional Flight Planner X that I used for all the other flights I ever did with the 7478 uh, by SSG, but then the V1. So, if this doesn't work out, they always uh, came uh, down very nicely. I suppose it has got to do something with the high fuel flow now on the uh, climb out. So we'll just uh, see what it's uh, going to be when we are over the ocean. Beautiful Orpex scenery for Northern California. So anyway, I'll just proceed with the flights and I am back with you guys as soon as we uh, have crossed the ocean, flying over Europe and preparing the uh, descent and approach into Amsterdam. We'll just see uh, how that works and I'm very anxious to see whether we will live by then, if we have uh, fuel uh, on board uh, when we reach Amsterdam. We just uh, have to uh, wait and see how the uh, performance files that I use so uh, work out. Anyway, I'll continue the flights and I'm back with you guys when we are ready for approach preparation. So see you in a bit. So welcome back. We are now uh, across the pond. We are approaching the northern coast of Ireland as you can see on the uh, chart here so it's still uh, roughly one and a half two hours to go to uh, Amsterdam so let's take a closer look at some of the uh, ICAS messages that have now appeared first is fuel tank engine and uh, when you look at the fuel system you can now see that there is uh, an equal amount of fuel in each tank and when that happens you can basically uh, turn off the uh, override pumps and the uh, crossfeed valve so let's do just that now the message is disappeared and what you see is that each engine is now fed fuel from its own uh, engine tank with its own pumps So if I take a look at the uh, flight management computer, the uh, zero amount of fuel in Amsterdam, that is now changed. It's uh, 13,400 kilos of fuel when we arrive, uh, which is slightly less than anticipated in the flight plan, but uh, it might... Um, well, we just have to wait and see what it is when we actually arrive in Amsterdam. I have the impression that uh, this is calculated by purely the current fuel flow which can be found on the engine page in here and this number 
this, these four numbers are add up. So right now it's 8,000 kilos per hour. And if you then take a look at the uh, fuel page, which is here. Oh, click spots, really. There it is. So there's still 24,400 uh, kilos of fuel on board. So with 8,000 uh, per hour, that's three hours uh, flying time. Well, the distance to Amsterdam is 567 nautical miles, so that's a little over an hour. So my guess is that it's just taking the actual fuel usage and makes a calculation uh, based on that. But the, the point with that is, the problem is that um, we will not use this, this amount of fuel for the rest of the flight. Um, we will have to make a descent from fly level 350 down to the ground. And during most of that time the engines will run on idle with very low fuel uh, usage. So maybe this number will run up after the descent. We'll just have to wait and see what that's like. Anyway, that was a quick heads up on the uh, progress of this flight. Like I said, we are approaching Northern Ireland. So I'll be back in uh, roughly one hour for the uh, descent preparation for our arrival into Amsterdam. See you in a bit. So we're <coughs> here. So here we are again. We are uh, roughly 15 nautical miles before our top of descent, so time to uh, make an effort for the uh, descent uh, preparation. So what we expect is a runway 27 in Amsterdam. We will just listen to an ADIS real quick. Echo, Hotel, Alpha, Mike, Airport Information, Whiskey, 0655, Zulu, Weather, Wind, 2, 5, 8, at 3, 1, Gusting, 2, 4, 1, Visibility, 1, 0, 1000, Sky Condition, Few Clouds at 2, 1100, Ceiling, 2, 1300, Broken, Light, Rain, Temperature, 1, 7, Dew Point, 1, 3, Q and H, 1, 0, 0, Zero, zero. Advise on initial contact. You have information. Whiskey. All right. So it's going to be heavy winds in Amsterdam. That's always nice. Echo. The wind will be coming from 250. So it's either going to be landing on runway 27 or a 27 approach with a sidestep uh, or a circling approach to runway 24. Um, let's just uh, anticipate a runway 27 uh, arrival. So first thing we have to do is make sure that the ILS is set correctly. Triple one decimal five five at two six seven. So let's verify that in the nav radio page. Triple one five five two six eight. That's now in both the VORs instead of the ILS. I'm not really sure why it does that. It should be in here and not in the VORs. Let's make a VOR 2 the Amsterdam, the Sherpa Palima VOR. That's 108.4. Okay, so we'll and if we engage in that one, it is identified. And we are 157 nautical miles out of Amsterdam right now. So let's go back to the flight management computer. Go to the approach reference page. It's going to be a flaps 30 landing with a VREF of 139. With here the correct ILS uh, frequency, course, and the runway uh, length in there. So we should be all right with that. I think we'll use auto brakes 
three. And that's basically it for now. But so what we will do for the approach is we will fly to, or we have to descend to 7,000 feet over the Sharp Apolima VOR. Then we have to descend further to 3,000 feet and then in a descending turn down to 2,000 feet for the uh, ILS runway 27. If we will do a circling approach for runway 24, we will uh, fly above the glide slope on the ILS path till we are uh, roughly 1,000 feet and then we'll start to make a left hand turn into runway 24. Let me just see if I can get a chart for that particular approach because it is an official procedure. Yeah, here it is. So what we'll do then is we'll fly on the 267 radial start to make a, a left hand turn at this point Echo Hotel 654 Papa Alpha Mike 8.9 so what I'll do is I'll set uh, 117 decimal 8 as the standby frequency for VOR 2 no we cannot do that in this one so that's something to take into consideration if we're gonna make the circling approach have to switch to the Papa Alpha Mike VOR and use the 8.9 uh, DME reading as the uh, starting point of the turn for final for runway 24. Now there is a warning after passing 8.0 Papa Alpha Mike expect moderate turbulence on final approach when average wind velocity exceeds 30 knots so that is uh, applicable to us in this flight and correction for Mr. Approach, you have to climb to uh, one uh, to, to uh, two thousand feet. The minimum descent altitude is one thousand. And basically, that will also be the minimums for this approach. We have to fly the 267 radial for uh, for Papa Alpha Mike. So I think what I'll do is I'll set uh, an F1 to 1178 course 267. of 268 so the ILS is still set we have share Papalima VOR for NAV2 and the Papa Alpha Mike VOR for VOR1 so if we're gonna do the circling approach we don't use the ILS we're gonna use v the VOR uh, mode for NAV radio Anyway, let's initialize the descent to 10,000 feet. Well, let's go down to 7,000 immediately for the Sharp Apolima VOR. We have to fly to that one anyway. And when we set 7,000 in the uh, MCP altitude window, that will uh, give the uh, flight management computer the information that it can descend according to the profile that is in there for um, 7000 feet of flight level 070. So let's take a quick look at the legs. It's going to be a lump so 230 or below. That's the first constraint that we have to meet. Which is correct, 
then we're fly towards Edpos and then to Suchel where we have to be below 10,000 and above 7,000. So Edpos, that's correct. Suchel, 10,000. 10,000 is fine because we have to be over here at 7,000 feet. So there's no point in being at 7,000 already uh, at uh, Suchel. Then we will proceed via Titfo, Echo Hotel 639. Let's grab the approach chart. So that's Titfo. Uh, so in this plan, uh, the Sherpa Papalima VOR is not in there. And I want that one in. So I'm going to insert that one manual, Sherpa Papalima. And I want to be at Sherpa Palima at 220 knots at 7000 feet. After Sherpa Palima, we will fly Echo Hotel 804. And then from Echo Hotel 804, we will make the turn towards Echo Hotel 615, and then it's Titfo. After Titfo, we will fly to Echo Hotel 639er. For runway 27, so execute this profile. So that is the uh, approach procedure set correctly. I want to be at 804 at 3000 feet. Titfo at 2000. Because Titfo is the point where we will intercept the. Uh, we have to be at 2000 feet before we intercept the glide slope. So this vertical profile is now set correctly in the flight management computer, then it's runway 27. So we can now gently follow along the flight path. Auto brakes are set. Now let's speed brakes cannot be armed uh, judging by the looks of it. Let's take a quick look at the checklists. Descent checklist recall. That is checked. Notes are checked. Auto brakes are set to three. Landing data. VRF is 139. And the minimums, we have to set those. If we fly the ILS runway 27 approach, we have a minimum altitude of 200 feet. So those are set as well, and the approach briefing is completed. So anyway, I will continue the descent and I'm back with you guys as soon as we uh, start to uh, arrive over uh, Amsterdam for the final stages of this approach. See you in a bit. So we are in the final stages of our flight. We are approaching the Sherpa Palima VOR. There's lots of wind, as you can see by the, uh, by the heading from the nose versus the track of the airplane. And I think Active Sky XP is uh, really outperforming itself in terms of the, the clouds, the sky. It looks amazing. But anyway, that's not what we're here for. So let's take a closer look. 
We're now directly inbound, Sharp Papalima. We have to be there at 7,000 feet at a speed of 220 knots. We're going to meet that constraint easily, I guess, because we are at 7,000 already. We're almost 600 feet to go. So slowing down to 220 shouldn't be much of a problem. Quite anxious to see if the automation will do that correctly. And let's listen to another ADIS for Amsterdam, see what the latest weather is like. Echo Hotel Alpha Mike, airport information Zulu 0725. Zulu weather wind 258 at 30, gusting to 40, visibility 10,000, sky condition few clouds at 1,800, ceiling 2,300, broken temperature 17, dew point 13, QNH 1001. Advice on initial contact, you have information, Zulu. All right, winds three zero knots, gusting one four. Echo Hotel Alpha Mike, airport information Zulu zero seven two five. Zulu weather wind two five eight at three zero, gusting to four zero. Visibility one zero thousand. Sky condition few clouds at one thousand eight hundred. Ceiling two thousand three hundred. Broken temperature one seven dew point. 3 QNH 1001 Advice on initial contact you have Alright, QNH 1001 We are 7000 feet Speed is reducing nicely to 220 So that's excellent uh, work on the VNAV And let's uh, set flaps 1 I guess uh, the sim will uh, stutter a little bit because we are over Amsterdam, which is quite densely built with a lot of uh, autogen. There is hard winds that's always uh, causing a massive uh, calculation uh, hit on the uh, CPU, which also can result in stuttering. But we'll just have to uh, wait and see how it goes. So we are flaps 1, speed 210. And we are continuing continuing our descent. That's not entirely correct because I said 7000 at Sierra Papalima. We are not there just yet. Now it says that it requires extra drag so let's engage the speed brake. So let's just uh, see how the automation goes. I have a traffic warning, but I don't have any sounds for the traffic warning. That's Does seem to be something wrong in my installation concerning the sounds of the uh, some of the instruments. Anyway, we are descending 3,000, so let's uh, switch from uh, normal to 1001. There we are. really like the accuracy of the ELNAV. It should continue this direction a bit longer before making this turn because now I won't be able to make a good turn uh, onto final. So what I will do is switch it back to heading select. Oh. So ELNAV can be a little bit more accurate on following the magenta lines. This is not the correct line to intercept and establish ourselves on the ILS, so I will take this manually.
and we can basically descend oh with a vertical speed of uh, 700 feet per minute nice and easy and we can reduce the speed to 180 set flaps 5 the amount of wind <laughs> 43 knots that's incredible uh, so what we have to do is take a look at the nav radio page ILS is now set so I wonder why I didn't see it on the approach phase EFIS mode nav disagree Basically, you have to set your ILS uh, frequency and course in the VOR left. That's not correct. Let's see. We are now there. So let's make that left-hand turn. Let's make a left turn heading 29 or 8 to intercept and establish on the ILS. And let's uh, engage the approach mode. Approach mode is armed. Ground speed is already 160 because of the wind. So with winds like uh, 40 knots, what you actually can do and what actually happens in Amsterdam uh, every now and then when they have a storm like this, is that you can land a Boeing 747 on runway 22. If they have a really strong southwesterly wind and uh, it's, it's coming in at roughly 220 degrees, uh, with like winds gusting up to 40 or 45 knots they will actually land 747s on this short runway it's quite an amazing sight um, but uh, we are initially heading for 27 and i might do the side step to 24 we just have to wait and see what the wind is like but with the wind at 248 that's quite a massive crosswind i think i will go for the final uh, for the circling approach for runway 24. Just pretend that ATC clears us for that one. So 139, it flaps 30, that's the final approach speed. We are 13 point uh, negative, we are Bravo Victor Bravo, that is the one. Yeah, bravo, Victor, bravo. So we are 13 uh, nautical miles out. The localizer is alive. Localizer is green. Turning in for final. 12 miles to go. So let's set the missed approach heading. So I have a 40 knot uh, crosswind. When I land on 27, that will be a 20 knot cross, 20 degree crosswind from the left. If I were to land on 24, it's going to be a 10 degree crosswind from the right. I'm going for runway 24. Let's say that we are cleared for that approach. So let's make the heading 238. 
that's the final approach uh, or the missed approach course and the altitude will be 2000 so what we'll do is we'll just follow the uh, descent path for runway 27 uh, initially and then at roughly 1000 feet we will disconnect the autopilot and do a visual approach for runway 24 so let's reduce the speed further speed 170 flaps 10 Ground speed is 130 knots, so it's going to take us a while to uh, reach that uh, that runway with the the winds like this. Let's just set 160, so we have ground speed of 120. surprises me is that I don't have a magenta diamond for the uh, glide slope yet we should uh, be intercepting glide slope at Echo Hotel 639er so actually I was expecting to see a magenta diamond up here already moving in but uh, doesn't really look like that. So seven miles out, let's switch the gear down. And set flaps twenty. There's that magenta uh, diamond. We have now captured the glide slope. Glide slope is green. There's runway 27 up ahead. Runway 24 being down there. So let's set up the airplane for landing. Flaps 25. And flaps 30. We have a strong 30 knot wind with uh, gusting up to 40 knots, so that's 10. So let's say that we want to fly an airspeed of 145. Landing lights are on. Missed approach heading and altitude set. Auto brakes, let's set them to max. And here we are overflying Amstel Veen. The uh, Eulen State Student uh, Complex. With the south part of Amsterdam down there. Right now the wind is dead ahead on the nose, 2-6. So if the wind stays like this, then I will go for runway 2-7. No, we have to make a decision. Given the current wind, it's going to be runway 27. So let's just set the missed approach altitude uh, heading to 268. Not going to land with a 30 knot crosswind on runway 24. This is perfect. 10 degrees off the nose, 1, 30 knots. Okay, so basically uh, landing gear down lock, three green flaps, 40, auto brakes max, uh, spoilers. They don't seem to be... They are extended, so there's no arming for the spoilers. That's a bit strange. Uh, anyway, let's go over for manual control with this... Uh,
Other pilot and auto total disengaged. Seven. Pilot has control. Check 500 feet. Continue landing. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Forty. Twenty. Ten. Here we are, reverses. Reverses off. And here we are already. So let's start the Approaching APU. One, eight, left. Engage the uh, runway turn off and taxi lights. Retract the flaps. And vacate the runway. I think we made the right decision landing on runway uh, 27 instead of 24 given the wind. That was pretty strong. And with the uh, heading on short final, uh, basically uh, landing on runway 24 would have given us uh, too much crosswind uh, with these uh, speeds. Let's stop the clock. And the flight directors can be disconnected. Fifteen thousand nine hundred kilos of fuel on board just after landing, and according to the flight plan. It was 15,600, so that's really, really nice. Meaning that the uh, performance files... Uh, I think I used the ones for the PMDG 7478. Are actually working really nice with the uh, SSG 747. happening please don't crash to desktop now I want to see my landing from the outside so here we are again it's a slightly different ending uh, from the video than what you're used to uh, but uh, the sim decided to crash on me uh, when I was taxiing from the runway to the uh, to the parking position 
and that made me quite grumpy because now the flight is not locked in my logbook either so I'm missing uh, landing and uh, roughly uh, nine and a half hours of flying time uh, with this uh, thing um, to be honest this is the second flight that I did with this airplane and it's the second time the sim crashes on me so start to see a disturbing pattern there but uh, it's too early to uh, to call whether it's the uh, add-on or it's my sim because uh, both crashes occurred uh, either in Amsterdam or flying out of Amsterdam to uh, towards Luxembourg so it might just be that my uh, Holland scenery is just too uh, too heavy and that the uh, add-on airplane is just uh, tipping the balance into crashing it but if that was the case you would have seen a lot of crashes with the flight vector and the uh, Zebo mod as well and I haven't seen them so something to look into me into for me um, final thoughts on the add-on well like I said the 3d modeling is just excellent both uh, inside and out I think the uh, enhancement of the cockpit textures is really really nice the system depth well it's not uh, as deep as for instance a flight factor a320 but it's definitely not uh, too shallow I really um, I, I really like this uh, add-on. Uh, the objective of the uh, designers was to have fun with it, and I definitely have uh, fun with this uh, airplane. I'm also uh, pleasantly surprised by the performance. With the uh, performance file uh, that I use is the uh, PMDG 7478, uh, as far as I know. Uh, let's just check that. Uh, get new aircrafts. Seven four seven eight F. Well, anyway, the uh, the performance file that I have for the seven four seven eight F in uh, Professional Flight Planner X, that's pretty accurate. Um, I was supposed to arrive with fifteen thousand six hundred kilos of fuel, and I actually, when I left the runway, at fifteen thousand nine hundred kilos. So, um, if I would have completed the taxi, it would have been certainly somewhere around 15,600 uh, kilos uh, on stand so that's really really good um, yeah and, and otherwise in the fly tech you do have to follow uh, the procedures as they are in real life to uh, start the airplane load the flight plan etc I think the FMC still can use a little bit more work it, it's it's much improved I mean uh, hands down that that's uh, a nice achievement from the developers but still when you uh, enter like uh, waypoints or delete them that it, it's not behaving as it should in real life with um, with, with extra open lines appearing etc so I, I think it can do with a little bit pol of more polishing uh, just as the particle effect uh, what we saw with the uh, wet runway uh, yeah it, it wasn't on this flight it was the previous one that I did from Amsterdam to Luxembourg uh, the, the tarmac was wet in Amsterdam when I started it was just a huge cloud behind the airplane um, if you look at uh, for instance the IXEG 737 uh, they have done amazing work on the particle system, uh, giving very realistic water sprays, uh, etc., and uh, engine condensations, uh, that kind of stuff. I think if the developers of this uh, SSG 747 would be able to um, to polish the uh, particle system a little bit more, uh, that would add uh, a lot of uh, visual realism to the uh, to the add-on. But other than that, I think this uh, is a fine add-on. It's a lovely long-haul uh, airliner with most of the systems working. I think uh, objective achieved for the developers. Uh, certainly an add-on that you can have a lot of fun with. So that's my final thoughts on this one. Hope you liked the video. I can't show you a replay of the landing because of that uh, crash to desktop that uh, appeared. But uh, well, basically I'm not planning on doing another long haul flight uh, today. I don't have time for that. And I really wanted to upload uh, this video. So that's why we uh, end it like this. So I hope you liked it. If you have any tips, tricks, comments, questions or whatsoever, please leave them in the comment section below. As usual, please do so in a respectful manner. I hope to see you all again in good health uh, on another day on another video. So thank you for watching, stay safe and bye bye.